What's up, guys? It's been a while, about six months since the last episode. Welcome back to the Photographer's Journey podcast, the podcast where I talk to local photographers in the Florida area about what they do, if they're professional, how they got started, all that good stuff. And today I'm actually in Boca Raton, Florida for two podcasts today. And my first guest today is a restaurant manager turned photographer, and he once fought off a tick and lived to tell the story. <laughs> so... You probably know his work on Instagram. He's a great landscape photographer. It's uh, Paul Cook, PC3 Photos on Instagram. Be sure to check out his work. Welcome to the podcast, Paul. I'm going to turn the camera to you. Hey, thanks for being here. <laughs> thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. It's, uh, Excited. It's weird being on the side yeah. of the camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, if you, uh, if you know Paul from his photos, you may not know that he has his own podcast, sort of. Was a podcast format on YouTube? I did. I did a, um, it's a video podcast. I never actually turned it into like just standard podcast forum. So yeah, I would interview photographers from, I did some from the U.S., but also did a bunch from the U.K. and Australia. Oh, wow. And that was, I skimmed through some of them. It was like 30 minute episodes, right? Yeah, usually about 30. A couple of them went a little bit long to about 45 minutes. And then I had to break up a couple to two episodes and your podcast was as beyond the lens right that was your podcast behind the yeah behind. it started off at friday night behind the lens and i just shortened it to behind the lens but yeah it came out every friday night on my channel cool yeah. and that's are you still actively doing that no just kind of took a little break for it, it kind of run its course for a little while i was trying to find a way to add a little bit more content to my channel um just during kind of lockdowns whether it was here or around the world um just gave me something to do and really Get, you know talk to people because I was kind of isolating going, going from everything crazy, yeah. yeah and uh, yeah so it gave me like a second video for my channel per week and uh, yeah it just gave me the chance to meet a lot of cool people from around the world great photographers and now so now that lockdowns are ending and travels starting to open so, up a little bit yeah. I hope to get to actually meet some of them in yeah. person yeah. that's pretty cool well we'll get into the YouTube stuff a little bit later but let's go yeah. back to uh Kind of your start. I know you were a restaurant manager for a while yeah. before that kind of music, but like, why? What got you into photography? Uh, yeah, so I've always been kind of interested in it, even as like a teenager or kid. You know, I didn't have any kind of camera, just kind of a disposable yeah. Kodak, a Kodak Instamatic. You know, with the, the weird flash bulb on top of it and stuff like that. But I was always taking photos of whether it was places I was at or my friends, and. Uh, you know, as a teenager, that would have, back then, it's different now. I think people take pictures of themselves a lot more. But back then, you know, my friends were like, God, stop taking pictures of me. And now it's kind of funny that they want, when they look for old photos of themselves, that I'm the one they contact, even though they complained about it initially. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, it's always good to have those <laughs> memories. <laughs> so that's kind of how, I mean, I always had an interest in it. I just never had uh, time to do it between uh working in restaurants and being a musician kind of thing. And, yeah. So and, what came first, the restaurant or the musician thing? Uh, probably started playing guitar first, but I, uh, probably as a young teenager. Um, uh -huh. But then I uh, became, uh, I, I really, I think my first restaurant job was when I was 17, so kind of about the same time, just, you know, as a teenager. Oh, so you, like, started, what, as a busboy or something? And yeah, it I started as a busboy, and then I was a... I called it a food expediter where you just did nothing but run the food out of the kitchen to the tables for the servers and then just kind of progressively went up through uh, server or yeah server bartender then bar manager uh, regular restaurant manager then manager general manager yeah, yeah yeah so classic yeah. American story. <laughs> yeah it was you know I it was kind of a young man's game and um, had a lot of fun doing it I had worked in some some uh, a restaurant that was kind of like restaurant by day but then nightclub uh, after nine o'clock, so a lot of live bands and being, you know, musician. I got to meet a lot of mu other musicians that way. So yeah, it was, oh, it, was awesome. it was fun. Couldn't do it anymore, but yeah, I'm just getting too old. But is that how you got into the band scene? Though? No, um, you know, just when I was young, you know, as a kid, it was kind of the the whole 1980s hair metal scene with you know Rat and Motley Crue and Kiss and all that kind of stuff and. Yeah. And just all my friends were into it, so so yeah, that's what kind of you know my, all my friends were you know learning how to play guitar or bass or drums, so you know it was just kind of natural progression that I did it too. Oh, nice. I'm mixing up my timelines here. So yeah. <laughs> the uh, the music school. Yeah, so that was a little bit later. That was kind of in my early 20s. You know, after a few years of playing, probably four or five years of playing, okay. um, then I um, I was at the University of New Mexico. And I decided that that 
educational path was not for me, so I, I applied for um, a school called the Musicians Institute. It's kind of a pretty high level uh, music school out in Hollywood, California. Okay. And uh, went out there and... I don't think we could have timed this better. Yeah, right. <laughs> Before those people really interrupted you, where were we? That's what happened. Uh, I was just saying, yeah, I went out to music school and uh, did really well out there and uh, just kind of increased my uh, level of, you know, guitar playing and stuff like that. So, and th that, I mean, that really was my passion. Kind of a, you know, I guess maybe that's how photography eventually came in. It was kind of a, just another artistic another passion, yeah. Maybe a way to express my artistic, you know, passion yeah. for it. So, so then I kind of approached my. I'm sure you'll ask about it at some point, but I kind of approached my music or my photography the same way I approached my music at the at the time. So, okay. it's kind of a dark and stormy kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, the, the moody look. Yeah. And then your first camera was actually. I think you told me Thanksgiving 2016. Yeah, that's about right. So, yeah, about five years ago is when I got my first DSLR. My family surprised me with an early Christmas present. They bought me a Nikon D3200. It's kind of an entry level Nikon. Okay. And, uh, is that, did that have the replaceable lenses or is it the built in? No, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I could. I had several different lenses okay, for it. Yes, so. I don't. Yeah, I think it came with a couple kit lenses. You know, like an 18 to 55. No, maybe maybe that's the only one that it came with. And then I bought a, uh, a 50 millimeter, and I also bought like a 70 to 200 for it yeah. too. So the natural progression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it was, you know, it was a great little camera. It was a great camera to start out with. And I kind of, when I got it, I decided I was never going to shoot it in automatic mode. Yeah. And. So I started watching YouTube videos, put it in manual mode, and, and I, still to this day, I don't think I've ever actually put one of my DSLRs into, into automatic mode. Wow. In fact, okay. it's like 99% of the time it's on manual. That's pretty interesting. It's a, that's a good way to learn, too, because yeah. you get to learn, you know, the numbers. I think we talked about that, too. Like, I don't know how to teach people. I just kind of know the numbers from it, experimenting, right? yeah. you know? Yeah, it, you know, I'm not saying I didn't mess up tons of shots along the way, because I did, but... Yeah, no one has to. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what the archives are for. Exactly. And then your website, your description is like, you know, nothing ignites my passion, like landscape photography, which you can definitely see that in your photos. But how do you... So does landscape photography pay the bills, or is that... No, it helps. Um, I've been selling a good good amount of prints from my my website, and I don't know how it compares to anybody else because I've really never asked, but yeah. it's been enough to fund trips or, you know, new okay. cameras or stuff like that. That's and cool. I do a... PC3photos.com? Yeah, PC3photos.com. Okay, yeah. That'll be linked in the description below if you want to go check those out to help but, support Paul, you know, his work. But I feel like I do a fair amount of, um, I guess, marketing for it. You know, like, I'll link it in my story and in Instagram. I'll put it on Facebook, and you know I just see a lot more of that than say some other photographers who okay. who don't. So yeah. um, I, again, I don't know how my sales compare to other people, but it's been all right. But no, landscape yeah. photography does not completely pay the bills. So you know I've supplemented it with other other okay. forms of photography. That's cool. I mean, oh, those were mainly real estate and portraits. Real estate and portraits. Yeah, um, I haven't done too much of the real estate, although I actually you know thought it was pretty. I think it's pretty fun. You know. Yeah. Um, and it house. Yeah, and it does pay, you know, you have the opportunity, to pay, especially here in South Florida, you know, if you're yeah. charging by the square footage, you can definitely command a little bit more price. I can only imagine with a $6 <laughs> parking. <laughs> right. Yeah, nothing's free in Boca Raton. Um, portraits I do like, um, but only certain portraits. Okay. Um, indoor, or do you, like, go to locations? I, I've been doing mainly outdoor locations. I, um, I prefer couples and individuals over large groups of people. Yeah. I don't do weddings. Um, and it's not that I'm 100% opposed to it, but I just like to focus on the individual. I don't, um, I did, uh, I did a... Um, Wedding seems so stressful. It's just... Yeah, you got one shot to get it right. Yeah. And I, I, I'm sure I could do it, you know, but it, no, it's uh, just, I don't, it's not something... It does. It seems like a lot of stress, and yeah. I, I just don't want to introduce that kind of stress into my life. Yeah, I think if, we talked about that on the phone, too. It's like... You know, um, don't want to you know, just being around a lot of people. You know, we yeah. both kind of like the landscape, just you know, by yourself enjoying I'm, the landscape, or you know, one to two people. Sure, I'm kind of an introvert, you know, as we talked about, and uh, I'm okay, you know, one on one. Yeah. You know, I was like this as a kid too. I hated going to parties. You know, I'd rather hang out with a very, very small group of friends. So if I can work one on one with somebody or just another couple, you know, something like that, it, that, that that puts me at ease and that helps me put you know the client at ease too. Yeah. And pictures 
definitely turn out better when we're all at ease, right? Yeah. My wife kind of helps me with some of the, the portrait sessions because she's very good at posing people. Okay. Uh, even better than me, even though I'm the photographer. <laughs> she sees things that I might miss, and I'm getting better at it, but um, she's really good. So it's been kind of a good team, you know, when, she, uh, when I can schedule something around her teaching schedule. So the name kind of caught me, PC3 Photos. Uh, obviously it's Paul Cook, but where did the three come from? So the three is, I'm the third. My dad was junior and then my, my grandfather was, you know, just just Paul Cook. Um, yeah, so I'm the third. Uh, I just thought it looked better with the three. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it draws more attention. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's how I started out with that and it's kind of how I've become known, I guess. I don't know if I'm ever really known, but you know, I have run into people down at the beach. I had some shirts made that had the logo on it or whatever, oh, yeah. and people come up to, oh my God, your PC3 photos. I said, yeah. Um, so do you just go like, well, I made it famous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I, I mean, it's always nice to be recognized, right? So yeah. it, uh, but yeah, like nobody ever put my name together with the PC3 photos part. So I've kind of added that Paul Kirk photography onto the end of it. It's kind of a, a lengthy thing now but so what's your signature on the photos is it pc3 photos or paul cook or it's still pc3 saw? photos okay. yeah for now yeah it's just because i think that's more how if i'm known at all that's how i'm known you know yeah, yeah it's, a, and it's a weird thing when you're like you're known for that someone did the same thing at the pier they we looked at each other's what's up man yeah. and he's, he recognized me from mike's podcast oh that. I was like, it is weird yeah i've run into one other person like as I was out doing a vlog where they, hey, I watch your videos, I subscribe to your channel, and you feel like oh, oh, maybe a little bit embarrassed, real. a little yeah. bit king of the world at the same time. Yeah, you're like, oh, you didn't see this one, did you? <laughs> <laughs> be straight here. I wrote down that your dad's still alive and you have good stories, and I completely forgot what that part of our conversation was about. Uh, I was going to tell you, that's how um, he got me into, like, the moody, dark, stormy, because he used to be, like, storm chaser kind of guy oh okay so it's the storm chaser yeah, story. yeah. so well, how intense of a storm chaser like going straight into tornadoes with the steel truck or the no or just a very uh very I don't, know, I don't know how you want to say it you know my dad so growing up he was very interested in weather he studied meteorology for a while at college um before becoming a human resources guy yeah. um but he's just all i just from the time i was youngest i remember him just being very interested in weather um I remember a story about him going out to in the small town that we lived in where he would go up in this tower and kind of spot for tornadoes during tornado season oh. and I always thought that was really cool and interesting. Um, so you can, you can like see them from a distance? Yeah, like yeah, and then it sends a warning to the town because it was, it was very rural. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, and just from the time I was youngest, I just remember being excited by weather and it was because of his interest in it. Yeah, and. Yeah, and like him, he had, he had to change to a different major in college because he didn't have the math skills for it. He had all the other skills, but he didn't have the math skills. And uh, I, I, I didn't ever entertain going in to be a meteorologist because I knew, I knew I didn't have the math skills. So, yeah, it's just kind of a thing, but that's yeah. where my love of dark, stormy weather comes from. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Going off the weather, your YouTube channels... All right, you actually have your YouTube channel, PC3 Photos. Yep. All, all the same name across platforms. Links will be in the description. I tried to make it easy um, like that. All the, yeah. all the same name everywhere. I did, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> With Miles Massey, Red Focus Entertainment, and now this podcast. Yeah, your videos are very entertaining. Kind of give a good glimpse behind the scenes of landscape photography after myself going on that five-day road trip. It's not all the glamour. It's made out to be it's not and if you watch a lot of the big youtubers and i don't want to name names right because i did start out watching their channels you know you know everything was just so beautifully filmed and epic and yeah. with the music and the amazing locations and from experience it's not like that i mean you see some of the bad weather kind of stuff and the, and the stuff that they go through in these locations too but they're still really glossed over you know, and I, I just... Yeah. You see the best bits of the B-roll. Yeah. You don't really see the four hours waiting for that shot. Or... Yeah. I want people to, like, feel like they went on a 15-minute adventure, at least to know a little bit of what I went through and to kind of feel like what, like, kind of what it would be like to be there, yeah. too, whether if it's, you know, I did one recently out at Highlands Hammock Park, which is in central Florida, and it was, like, 108 with the heat index, right? And I was just, like, sweating like mad. 
I, you know, I thought about like wiping it all off, but yeah, the camera, right? yeah, yeah, you know, I just I, I wanted, you know, that's part of it, you know. Yeah. It was terrible. I mean, it, it was, it was intense heat, and you know, I want people to see that. I, I did one in Maine where it was about 12 below zero, and you know, from being a Florida boy, that was yeah, that's pretty cold. Yeah. And if it's pouring down rain, I want them to see it. You know, I don't want them to see me hiding under a, you know, a oh, canopy yeah, your somewhere. Your intro shot is one, one of your shots in the intro. Is you, I actually saw the vlog too. Like you're just walking on a hill. There's nothing around you. And <laughs> you've got rain. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't. I definitely don't hide from the rain. In fact, it's kind of the running joke between some of my YouTube friends is that when it, bad weather moves in, I'm packing my bag and I'm heading out the door. Yeah. So. And sometimes that's, you know, sometimes that's how you get those, I mean, well, a lot of times that's how you get the moody shots. And you also get some really good light from it, too, especially if the storm passes and it starts to clear. You get the mixture of the good light and the Yeah, you the get the good clouds. clouds. I did that a couple of times downtown. I was like, ah, oh, it's raining. Let me go see what the sky is like when it clears up. And I understand a lot of photographers don't want to be out in there. You know, yeah. they worry about their equipment. And I do, too, you know. Um, and, or worry about safety and I definitely don't want to advocate going out in a hurricane or lightning storm which I do do um, but you know if that's something that's not comfortable for somebody I don't I don't want them to do but it you're just a trained because I'm doing it. So. I'm not a trained professional <laughs> but uh, um, you know I, I still think I take you know safety measures like I did a hurricane one last year where or when it, it you know when I first started doing the vlog it was all right you know um, but then it started getting a little dicey, you know, we had debris flying around and, you know, I even said in the video, okay, you know, at this point it's not really safe anymore. Roads are starting to flood, you know, so, yeah. I, so I got home. So I try to be safe about it and, and portray um, the weather, but then I don't want to be the weather channel guys where, you know, they're standing out there with, you know, stop yeah, signs flying by and stuff yeah. like that. That's just ridiculous. I don't forget where you put the clip, but you're just casually like, you're pointing to something and there's just lightning behind you and it's like yeah. you didn't even know that was there yeah and, and you know that, that's kind of the risk you take there wasn't even light lightning on the radar that morning um but i was taking pictures of a storm uh, like a dark moody storm it was early in the morning and the radar didn't show any kind of lightning activity at all but you never know you know it can happen anytime anywhere and I, in fact, I didn't even know about that lightning strike behind me on that clip until I got home and reviewed the footage. There is a shot that I did get that, um, after that, that nice lightning yeah. bolt coming down. But yeah, yeah. So, and, and to be fair, after I saw, saw I captured that lightning bolt, I packed up my stuff and went home. Oh, well, that's smart. <laughs> <laughs> Assuming that it was close. I don't want to tempt fate any more than I already did. Yeah, so don't try this stuff at home. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't advocate for it at all. Speaking of the cold temperatures like you're saying about 12 degrees you planned a trip to iceland didn't you yeah but then covid happened right yeah it? no that's right um we were scheduled to go march 17th through march like 30th of 2020 okay, so and or maybe it was march 19th through the 30th something like that but right like two days before we we're scheduled to depart um iceland air canceled everything everything kind of locked down um i had to call the we had ran into a camper van. We were going to stay outside. We were just going to sleep in the camper van. And uh, so I had to cancel that reservation. Um, and they were all pretty nice about it. Um, I've got refunds from everybody okay. um, yeah. back. But it you know, kind of but sucks it, not it, getting to go to Iceland, right? Yeah. Um, but it seems like you made use of that, though. Yeah. Like that so, trip vlog. so we rented another camper van. We were, yeah. So we canceled Iceland. And we thought we we're going to fly out to the west coast of the United States go, you know, California up through Seattle. So we rented a camper van there, booked another flight out to San Francisco. Same thing, one day before we were getting ready to leave, it shut down. And San Francisco kind of went into the strictest lockdown of anybody. So they were able to transfer that camper van reservation down to Miami. And yeah, so we booked that and we drove up to the mountains of like North Carolina and uh, Tennessee and yeah. Northern Georgia. And how was that? I know you had a very interesting hike. Yeah, uh, so it was, it was a great trip, but we were like one day late for everything. We, we hey, we're going to go to this park. We'd get there. Oh, we closed yesterday because of COVID. We did find some great places to go to yeah. that weren't like inside of national parks or state parks. But yeah, we were just like one day late for everything that we wanted to do. Um, so we went on these like kind of really hike off beat off the beaten path hikes you know not not necessarily in a state park or whatever yeah. and uh apparently i got a tick on me 
and I didn't realize it till we got home, so I don't know how long it was on me. It could have been eight or nine days. It could have been one day. I'm not sure. Um, but my, my wife noticed it on me. But I was scheduled to go back right back to work the next day. Yeah. So she kind of took tweezers and ripped it out, got the whole thing out. And about seven or weeks, eight weeks later, I started feeling really bad at work. Oh, that delayed. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I didn't even notice because it was kind of during the height of COVID and restaurants were doing, you know, the takeout only. Yeah. It was kind of a madhouse, right? And, uh, but I noticed about seven or eight weeks later that I just, I didn't have the energy that I had. At the end of the night, I could barely walk out to my car. So I went to the doctor. Anyway, long story short, I contracted Lyme disease from it. So, oh, yeah. And that's only carried by ticks, right? Yeah, yeah as, as far as I know, yeah. And it sounds like you got a pretty severe version of it. Yeah, so I went on a medical leave from work and because uh, I, I just I couldn't walk. You know, there were days that I could not walk from one end of the house to the other without just being exhausted, my joints hurt. And it's a pretty tough uh, disease that nobody, unless you've had it, you know, nobody knows about it. And it's kind of a hidden kind of disease where it looks like nothing's wrong with you. You can yeah. talk to me and it doesn't seem like anything's wrong. Uh, but I'm getting better, you know. Uh, a year later, I feel like I can do a lot more. I'm, I can walk up to maybe I don't know, two miles at a time now. Uh, when I was working, I was doing eight to ten or even more miles per day uh, at the restaurant, and there's not quite back back to that level yet. So. Okay. Yeah, so, getting better slowly but surely. And that's actually the time you kind of retired from yeah. the restaurant business, right? So yeah. just kind of all worked out. Yeah. So just kind of put all everything into the whole. Uh, photography yeah, thing at that photography, point photography youtube yeah. did uh youtube did that start at the same time as photography or yeah it, it started about the same time i went on a medical leave because i'm just not the kind of person that can sit around the house right you so something to occupy the mind yeah so on, on certain days where i felt good you know or relatively good anyway you know um, i would go somewhere kind of local and and start doing a vlog and kind of just turn it into every week kind of thing and it gave me something to do and like I said, a year or so later, I, I'm starting to feel better and can be a little bit more adventurous. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Did you know editing before you did that, or did you just kind not, of learn? Not video editing. Okay. Yeah, I, not, I mean, maybe very basic stuff. So, yeah. again, it's just the kind of thing in the age of YouTube where I just watch YouTube videos and or just figure it out myself. Yeah. That's, that's and I'm not great. I'm not great at it. I've, I've seen your stuff, and you, mean, you've got all these quick cuts and, and really action-packed stuff well, and i've been doing like action movies since i was 10 or 12 so yeah. i mean I've it's harder for us older guys right <laughs> i don't know i just I want something just hit all of a sudden it's not pe I don't know, people i've always liked my work i never understood yeah. why and oh it's great it's quick it's, and, and the, the, the cuts are really quick and and my wife even watched one the other night and she said wow i like how he you know cuts from this to that and it's just really you know fast-paced and action-packed yeah i mean i'm I guess that's just kind of my style. I yeah. like to be very overly dramatic. I don't know if that's the same thing with this review. Like I'm trying to get my channel to not be sit at the desk and talk about this. Yeah, sure. I think we both agree. You know, yeah, abs get, absolutely. Get well, you said you grew up in Florida, right? Uh, I grew up all over. I went to high school down here, and then I moved away for, I don't know, 25 okay. years or so. Because you said you were in New Mexico for a while. Yeah. And that was just a bunch of bad weather, right? <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, I went to high school down here and, and then I moved away for uh, many years and then we moved back about 10 years ago. But the uh, reason we moved back was because we, we had two kids and they were kind of at that age where we needed to figure out what we're going to do with their education. Um, New Mexico is always probably the lowest ranked state as far as education goes. So um, I was able to transfer down here with the company I was working for at the time and uh, yeah, just came back to where I grew up basically. Huh? And uh, yeah, it was, it was a good move for the yeah. kids' education. So starting your own photography business, you said you read a lot of books to prepare for that. Yeah, um, my wife went out and bought several books for me, and again, more videos. Um, yeah, there's a lot to think of, but you know, I kind of, a lot of it was already information that I knew from running restaurants. I just kind of had to apply it to my own business. It's definitely not the same thing though, because yeah. working in a corporate situation, yeah, you got a lot of responsibility on you, but you also know there's kind of like a guidebook. Yeah, and it's not going to fold overnight, right? So it's very much different. But, but yeah, I think I was telling you earlier, I, I do enjoy a lot of like the business side of it and the administration part of it yeah. um, from my experience of running restaurants. Yeah, that makes sense. It's good to have that business side because yep. I'm trying to catch up and learn that right now. And then I got my dad who was a human resources manager, you know, for uh, Honeywell. So he's always giving me advice and stuff like that. So he's, he's retired now, but he's still very invested. Okay.
<laughs> Even though I'm 51, he's very invested in what I'm doing. Just going back to the bad weather. Let's talk broken gear for a minute. Broken gear. Oh, yeah, I've had some experience with that. Because especially with your bad weather being in the rain, I'm sure you've lost a couple. Yeah, so items. I had just bought the brand new Sony ZV-1 when it came out yeah. last year. Yeah, a little yeah. vlogging gear. Yeah, yeah. And I had which it on... one of the 17 releases was it? Oh, I don't know. It, it was. I bought it, it was probably the first release because I bought it as soon as it came out. Yeah. Probably within the first week or two. And I was doing a lighthouse challenge video uh, with another photographer from, from up in Michigan. And he had really bad weather at, t at the time too. And we had a tropical storm and I can't remember which one was blowing through at the time. But I thought oh, it might be fun to do a vlog in a tropical storm and you know, see whose weather is worse, right? You know, us or Michigan. And I, had, I, I was up on a jetty at, down at Deerfield, I think, yeah, at Hillsborough Lighthouse. And I thought I had it set up pretty strong, and then we had a huge gust of wind come up, and just straight on the lens, and so I lost that one. Then I was filming another video up a place about an hour north of here, and I was taking photos with my main camera, and I had my gimbal and GoPro, um, kind of filming me from behind, I guess. Yeah. And we had a huge wave, just a rogue <laughs> wave come in. Uh, and I saved my main gimbal, camera, GoPro. but it took, yeah, the, the surf kind of washed away oh, the, no. um, the gimbal and the yeah. GoPro. And I was kind of on these cliffs about seven or eight feet high. And I saw it just at the last second. I grabbed it before it went over and the gimbal was dead. But the, uh, the GoPro survived. Which gimbal was it? I don't, I don't it's, it's nothing big. It was oh, it, maybe okay. a 150, 175 dollar oh, so gimbal. Like it wasn't one of these. Gimbal. Okay, I was thinking like the Ronin. Or no, 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 nothing that expensive. Okay. But still, you know, it hurts a little. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so between those two, probably right. about a thousand dollars worth of equipment yeah. loss right there. And I've had other close calls, so I am definitely more conscious now about what I'm doing, um, especially when I'm. I'm, I'm Seascapes, you know, the sea is tough or the ocean's tough on your equipment yeah. without getting your equipment in the water, you know. Yeah, you'd be surprised the city can be rough too and yeah. there's concrete everywhere and yeah. you're not careful. I've this I've dropped that lens a bunch. I just had everything repaired recently <laughs> except this new USR, but no, actually this one this setup fell in the snow in Colorado. I have this new plate is yeah, different yeah. because the one I had I lifted the tripod off the ground, not much. It don't, it just screws on. So I guess it got loose and the yeah. camera just slid into this pile of snow. Oh. And again, Florida, so I, you know, second time seeing snow, I was like, oh no. And all I could see was the light from the LCD screen. It was that buried. <laughs> I was like, crap, I had to get it, go inside and like wipe it off real quick. Are you and good? It seemed fine. There was a few moments where it was like delayed turning on and yeah. got scared because I needed it for the next day. <laughs> Um, and it, it worked. It worked fine. I haven't had to send it in yet. Wow. Luckily, hoping it's got to shoot Saturday, so let's hope that doesn't happen. I set my drone down once. Uh, my, it was in the drone bag, and I walked off to do some photos somewhere else. And I, I walked off, and I never came back to the drone bag and forgot it. Oh, no. And I remembered I was about maybe a half a mile away, and so I started running, right? <laughs> and... I met up with this couple that said, hey, was this yours? Said, oh, thank God. <laughs> they just saw the frantic dude running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah, I've had, I've had some some interesting stuff happen with the camera gear. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was another thing you did. This, I'm just jumping all over That's the place fine. now. Yeah, the uh, you photographed the SpaceX launch. I think that was really how I started to see your profile. Yeah, that was kind of a last-minute deal. Um, I've always wanted to see a nighttime launch. I've seen a one-daytime launch, and, and, you know, it's not... I mean, it's spectacular, but not for photography yeah. unless you're you have access to get up there really close. But um, yeah, I heard they were doing a nighttime launch, and and I knew my son, my older son, was off the next day. So I asked him, "Hey, you want to go up there and see, you know, if we can see it?" And he said, "Yeah." So we drove up there. It was a four four fifty a.m. launch. So we we got up there probably about an hour early. So. We were on this beach in Melbourne, and it was pitch black. Oh, geez, and that's what, how far is that from here? That's a little over two hours, I think. Oh, okay, I thought it was... Two and a half, maybe. I thought it was closer to Jacksonville for some reason. Yeah, it, it was It was about two, probably two and a half hours. And uh, I'd never photographed a nighttime launch before. I've done a lot of nighttime photography, but it was pitch black on this beach. I had no, 
a kind of a general idea of where the launch was coming from because we were probably 20 miles or so south of Cape Canaveral or is it Kennedy? I can never remember. So I kind of just had my Google Maps out. I knew there was a little curvature in Florida right there. So I kind of just aimed my camera the right way and then we were watching on YouTube. Yeah. And I knew there was going to be maybe a little bit of a delay. So right before, I think they got down to about 10 seconds on YouTube. And so I clicked, you know, I just had it in bulb mode. So I just clicked it. And about 10 seconds later, you could see the big orange fireball coming up. And, and luckily, it stayed in my frame the whole way. I think I, it was about a two and a half, three minute long exposure. Okay. What, that, is, what does bulb mode do? I, people are talking about that for fireworks photos. I've never had to use it. So. Yeah, so bulb mode, most cameras, most DSLRs will take long exposures up to 30 seconds yeah. without. It'll just click, you know, you click it, it'll take 30 seconds, then it'll click off. Mm -hmm. on, you put it on bulb mode. Um, it won't click off until you manually do it. So, oh, okay. but you can't touch it. Once you, you know, you can start it like with your finger. You know, click mm -hmm. the shutter, but you don't want to do it. You know, click off with your finger because it'll cause shake, shake and yeah. you're, you'll have a blurry photo. So you need, so you need yeah, the velometer or um, yeah. I, I just have for my Sony, it's just a Sony remote control, oh, okay. and you, it, it'll take as long of it until your battery wears out, your sensor overheats, or that's interesting. <laughs> or you okay. click the, the so I've been off. wondering how to do that, and everyone said intro velometer. Yeah. yeah, I have one that just sits in my bag. It's no use. So. So I wanted to do it longer, but it was getting ready to. I, I couldn't tell, but it looked like it was getting ready to go out of my frame. Plus, it was getting to this trajectory, the rocket, that. I couldn't really see it anymore. So I thought, well, maybe I'll click off. And I kind of went back and forth for about 30 seconds. Probably should have kept it going a little bit longer. But anyway, I came, came away with a fantastic photo. And uh, yeah, I mean, considering it was all luck, really it was all luck. You know, I really didn't have any idea what I was doing. So I'm kind of waiting for another nighttime launch. They've had a bunch of daytime launches recently, but um, I believe they have a couple more nighttime launches coming up here i mean for not knowing where it was coming from that looked really good so now i know though yeah. so i'm gonna go back to that same beach and and yeah. really try to nail it i might have it like maybe a two camera setup next time too so okay and are prints available yeah um but since it's such a long exposure the quality is good but it's not Great. fantastic okay. so um yeah I, i've sold several uh just kind of like smaller eight by twelves but uh, yeah they look really good you know yeah. you know Put okay. it, you know, and really, you, you've got to put the print right, you know, right up to your face before you yeah. tell how grainy it is. So. Again, prints are available on his site if you've made it this far into the pod. Podcast. I don't know why I sound trying to sound hip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, prints are available on his site if you made it this far into the podcast. Now, one one cool video I did run across your channel was sky replacement. Okay. Let's, yeah. let's talk about it. Okay. You are very. What do you call it? Strict about sky replacement? Or? I, I go back and forth on sky replacement. So if you ask me what I think about it, I don't care if other people use it in their photos. It doesn't bother me at all because, you know, I, I think it's a skill in itself. Mm -hmm. Although Photoshop's making it really easy to do now. Yeah. I, I don't really care if other people do it. I think if I were to ever use it, it's going to be more for personal use. Because as a landscape photographer, I think one of our biggest pet peeves is having crystal clear blue skies with no interest up there, especially maybe who likes dark stormy clouds, right? right. So I, I don't know if I'd ever release one for other people to view, but if I just put it in my archives and I'm scrolling back, you know, oh, hey, that was a great vacation, right? Yeah. I think I would rather look at a kind of a, a dark stormy cloud or even just any kind of cloud interest in it than a bright blue skies yeah. um, and I'm not saying I would never use it but I think I would always say hey this photo is, you know, I use sky replacement and I, I would only use one of my own photos that I've taken of the sky to do I don't yeah. think I would ever use somebody else's that just doesn't seem right yeah it is kind of weird because I've used it a couple of times but not anything I've posted I was like oh cool this came out because I'm sure you you and me both know the pain of what it used to be, especially if you yeah, have trees. Oh. Like I never, yeah, I never was, bothered with trees. I did once when there was a building site. So not really a replacement. I added stars behind it yeah. to the sky just because yeah, they weren't visible. Definitely harder, and it's definitely much easier now. Um, but one thing about it, um, I would never use it in anything that I sell to somebody else. I want those to be like the most 
real, most authentic yeah, photos. Sure, Obviously, yeah. there's going to be photo editing to it, and there always is, yeah. and there always will be. Um, but I want that to be an authentic scene, and so anything that people purchase from me, I would never ever use in something like that. But like I said, it's going to be more, you know, more for personal use. I look back on it in 20 years, and I'd rather see an interesting sky than a, a blue sky. Yeah, like I have this print everybody loves from Colorado. Uh, just looking off the porch, it looks like a poster card, a little yeah. Christmas town. Yeah. But we didn't get, we got a good sunrise at one point, but I didn't get the camera out fast enough because we were like trying to leave. And we're like, oh, you're missing the sunrise. Like, crap. I didn't get, <laughs> I, didn't, I think I dropped the camera again. I didn't get enough time. And then, so that picture, I actually put a wipe on my story. I was mm. like, oh, this Photoshop tool is so cool. I'm just like, it looks cool, but then it's also like, I don't know. I feel weird about it too. Yeah. I don't know. I did some in Maine because I was doing that. I, I had that vlog in mind because we had about three cloudless days at the end of our trip where it was just kind of unusual. The first five days, it was nothing but clouds and snow and stuff. And then it just cleared and I um, thought, well, you know, what if I you know, did a vlog on sky replacement? Because it had kind of just come out a couple of months earlier and I didn't see a lot of uh, videos on there about YouTube. But it definitely had... Uh, some strong responses. I think a couple of people unfollowed me for it, even though I said I oh, probably right. yeah. would never that's, use this. Um, that's but weird that, that people unfollow you for that. That must be like that's the way die it is. hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, they don't ever tell you why. You know. Yeah. They just click unfollow or whatever. So that's what happens. You know, I'm not a I'm I'm not a purist. Like you know, I I know certain if you're t taking a picture for say like a travel company or something like that they may require a certain sky well you may only be there a certain amount of days to get that shot you know so you, you may have to do something along those lines to to get the photo that the client's looking for yeah. you know uh, unless you have a month there to spend yeah, you know yeah. and get out there to sunrise every morning until you get the sky that you want you know you may, you may have to do and i'm sure there's just tons of that going on you know yeah. you I, I think it's safe to assume that any photo you see on Instagram is, you know, manipulated in some way, you know, yeah. and, and, and to think otherwise is just <laughs> kind of naive yeah. these days. I guess it just kind of begs the question, like, or not really the question, but it makes it easier for people to want to get into it, I guess, because the tech, I started off just doing it for fun, so the technology barrier never was really a yeah. thing. Like, I opened After Effects, I was intimidated at first, then you start learning it. I don't see, like, I get where people would be intimidated by it, yeah. but, so I guess all these tools are making it easier for people to get into it, but then also, like, if you're working for a tour sport or something, like, you may need, you may need to know the old school way of doing it, Yeah. which is, yeah, I, yeah I, th I think you're right, I think it, and plus there's so much more information about the, out there now about how to do it, yeah. you know, when I was growing up as a guitar player, you either went to a guitar teacher or you went to your older friend or brother who knew how to play and yeah. learn from them. There wasn't Marty on YouTube. Yeah, and, and then it, it took a lot longer to get better back then. Mm -hmm. But now these kids that are like 12 and 13 years old are playing at such a high level right now uh, based on, because you can find anything you want to learn how to play this or that on YouTube. And you know, just the technology is just making things just easier no yeah. matter what it is now. I love technology. I love helicopters flying over. Yeah, we made it. I do love the, the changing technology. It just goes by so fast. And, you know, I've kind of promised myself the older I get, I don't want to be one of those older people who loses touch with technology. You know, mm -hmm. I'm sure it'll bypass me at some point, but I don't want it to be until I'm like really, really old if I'm lucky enough to live that long. Yeah. I mean, I mean, hey, we've made it 40 minutes into a podcast until the first helicopter flew by. So <laughs> that's that pretty good. That's an achievement. That's pretty good. Okay, so this quote I wrote down, you said, you heard it from somebody. A photographer needs the skill to be able to get people to part their cash in exchange for photographs. Did I say that wrong? Yeah, no, 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 that was right. That was uh, one of my YouTube friends, Dave LaFan. He, uh, um, his channel's Let's Click Photography over in the UK. And uh, I think he was... I don't remember what he was talking about, but I think I used that under sky that quote under the sky replacement thing, because again, you know, you're tr you're trying you're trying to sell a photograph, you know, and like I said, I went back to a travel company. 
maybe that's what is needed to get them to part with their cash, you know. Um, but that's really, you know, what you're doing. You're trying to get the best photo that the client's looking for to get them to part with their cash. Yeah. Very true. Oh, okay. I think, I mean, that's kind of everything on paper that we sort of talked about. Okay. Um, what is a piece of advice you'd give to somebody starting out in landscape photography? Yeah, um, well, I think we already talked about it. You know, don't be afraid to get out there in, in weather. Weather is your friend, can be your friend as long as you're safe about it. Um, you know, learn to read radars, um, learn safety, you know, and always safety first. You know, I, don't, I can't stress that enough. Um, don't go out and shoot just because it's, it's a nice day out, you know. Yeah. That's going to yield results too. Um, but the more practice you get shooting in bad weather, I think ultimately makes you a better photographer in good weather. If you, if you can photograph in some of the worst weather possible, it makes a day like this just a piece of cake. Piece of cake. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I guess that's my one piece. I mean, there's other things too, like, but you know, I guess I'm known for the whole weather thing and trying to get out in the worst conditions possible. So, um, yeah, as far as that, you know, again, safety first, but, um, don't, you know, make sure you protect your cameras. You know, there's ways to do that. And I'm not saying expose your camera to, you know, tropical downpours and yeah. hurricane force winds, but you know, there, there's ways around that kind of stuff too. And yeah, just don't be afraid of weather as long as you can do it safely. And I think you, the, the photos that you're going to get, um, just add like a whole different level of um, drama and interest to your photos than that. Well, on that helicopter, <laughs> I think it's time to end this podcast. Um, well, yeah, thanks so much for coming out. Um, guys, be sure to check out PC3 Photos on Instagram, his website too. All the links will be in the description. He makes weekly YouTube videos, sells prints on his websites. Maybe starts a podcast again. Podcast yeah, video. Maybe. Maybe. Video again. We'll see. Uh, you know, d let let the weather be your friend and stuff what his quote safety was, first safety first yes <laughs> uh, yeah thanks so much for coming hey, out, Paul. thanks for having me uh, miles this has been fantastic it's uh, yeah it's, it's weird uh, again it's still weird being on the side of the camera so <laughs> yeah. hopefully uh, i didn't ramble too much for you oh no it's perfect amount of this new microphone set of course but we'll talk about that once we close out this podcast all right all right uh see you guys on the next episode